and uh, we're going to take a look at the guard play. So far, Loyola has turned the ball over too many times, and the strength for Towson really is in its backcourt. And the main strength is that man right there, Marty Johnson, who is uh, going to compensate this season for the Tigers for the loss of Bill Leonard, who was a mainstay in the backcourt for Towson State for the last couple of years. He's graduated, so now it falls on Marty Johnson. And Mike Morrison for Loyola really is the only experience on an otherwise very, very young Greyhounds team. Morrison is not shy. He will put the ball up. But even if he scores 24 points, which he's already done so far this season, it doesn't necessarily mean Loyola will win. The key for Loyola, other than Morrison shooting well, will be the fact that Holovan Billups or Dave Wojcik has got to be able to bring the ball up and handle the pressure against Towson State's defense. We have the A team in here tonight. And Vernon Gunn, of course, has joined us recently. He's an old Cavalier from Virginia. He's in the stands right now and wants to meet some people. Vernon? <laughs> all right. Thank you, gentlemen. I understand that the noise is deafening when all 5,200 seats are filled here at Towson Center. And you can bet that this near-capacity crowd will certainly make sure of that tonight for the next 40 minutes of basketball. Towson State and Loyola. You ask the casual basketball fan, they may say it's just another game. But you ask any player who has ever worn the Towson and Loyola colors, they'll tell you it reaches much, much more than that. But let's go to the starting lineups and get this game going. We go to the defiant one. Chris Thomas, <laughs> Vince Bagley. Defiant, uh, that happens to be the school for which one of the Loyola coaches played, one of the uh, assistant coaches. Here's the Loyola lineup now as we run them down. Yeah, the center man's a big guy, 6'10", uh, Mike Wagner, who wears number 45, and he is a freshman. The uh, forwards, John Boney. Uh, John is a uh, 6'7". He's also a freshman. These kids played in high school last year. He teams up with Brian Walker, another freshman at 6'6", who played in uh, New Hampshire and who comes from Massachusetts. The guards, this is a problem, but they're youngsters and they're coming along. Holloman Phillips, who's number 10, is 5'8", and is a junior. He's a transfer. And Mike Morrison, 32, is the key man, 6'3", a junior. For Towson State, the center man is Stephen Dorsey. Number 42 is 6'7", and a junior. The forward's Adrian Basie, number 34, 6'4", a, a sophomore. John Bays, number 50, is 6'7", a junior. The guards are Marty Johnson, 6'2", a senior, and 22, Mike Fink, who is 6'5", and also a senior at Towson State. We'll be ready to start this ball game right after this message. Well, you have to be very committed to customer service. You have to be sort of obsessed with customer service. And you have to win every customer one at a time. And we do that. If they want a honeydew cut in half because they don't want a, a whole melon, then you stop what you're doing, you go back and you cut it in half for them. You may have a new product or you may have a new cut and they're not sure how to cook it and we tell them exactly how to do it and i enjoy helping them they're special people but just days before christmas at lutherville way the watson boys were ready with their christmas display they'll be trim trees wreaths and ornaments by the score exciting christmas specials many never seen before christmas creation corner where you can see talented people at work with originality your eyes will be dazzled by all they behold Twinkling lights, shiny balls, just waiting to be sold. The one thing to remember all season through is that the Watson boys are waiting for you. Ch -ch 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 Charlie Some guys make all the right choices. Totally Adidas from Charlie Wudo Sports. Glendamond, Old Town, and Liberty Court. Adidas. Well, I feel good. I feel good. Naturally, I feel good. I feel good. That's the way it should be. I feel good. I feel good. Naturally, with Yalich Clinics, I feel good. If you're suffering with pain, call the Yalich Clinic for a free consultation. We only accept those cases we truly believe we can help. Check the yellow pages for the clinic nearest you or call 461-PAIN. With knowledge, clinics, I feel good. I feel good. We're getting Mike Boyle in here to start the ball game instead of Stephen Dorsey. Chris, number 44, starting in a, a jumping center is uh, Adrian Basie uh, along with Mike Wagner of Loyola. Loyola in the dark, 
Thompson stay in the home white uniform, trimmed in uh, black and gold. Youth versus a little more experience for Towson State. We'll see how it goes. Take it away, Dean. Okay, we get the ball. And Oil in control of Holloman Phillips in the backcourt. Towson usually a man-for-man -man defensive club, and that's the story right now. Oil has had the turnovers. So many, many turnovers in the backcourt. 29 in force turnovers. Morrison, their best shooter, is short, but they rebound and put it back and up, and it won't drop. It won't drop for John Boney. Well, Boney did a good job. He went up strong to the boards. It was really a poor shot by Morrison. Uh, it looked like he forced it. It was well right of the rim. But Loyola was there to get the ball, and uh, they'll go to the line. First opportunity. So Boney's a freshman from Atlanta, Georgia, 6'7". His brother played at St. Bonaventure. He was recruited. Re Mar Mark Amatucci really wanted this kid badly, and he got him. He's from Pennsylvania. His folks live in Atlanta now. But he was a terrific player. He went to high school in Toronto and led his high school team to a 44 and 8 record. Good inside position as the Towson comes away with the ball and uh, John Bay. And here's the key guy, Marty Johnson, who prepped at Cardinal Gibbons. Gibbons. Went to Richmond for a couple of years. Just came back, sat out a year, played last year, did a good job, and was really the key, along with Fink. And the strength of the Towson offense. Underneath. Laid up by Boyle, who's fouled, and he'll get two. Nice pass by Bays, who is not shy at shooting the ball. In fact, they call him the Mad Bomber. But that time, even though he had the wide open shot, he passed that up in favor of the baseline pass. And Boyle was right there. He didn't get the hoop, but he goes to the line for two. Mark Boyle from Springfield, Virginia, 6'8", a junior. Bidding to tie the game here in the opening uh, couple of minutes. I think one of the things that'll be interesting to watch in the early moments of this game is how well Holovan Billups, who is the number one guard or the point guard for Loyola, is able to bring the ball up the floor and get the Loyola offense into motion. Keep your eye on that. That's right. He's a little guy in the backcourt. Morrison has the ball right now, however. And he calls for Billups, who gets the ball. And Marty Johnson playing right in his jersey. Phillips from St. Louis, double team, gets it inside, and uh, Wagner can't save it. Fink gets it to Marty Johnson. Nice feed. Again, uh, 44 goes up strong. Mike Borrell is fouled. We'll go to the line, the second on the Greyhound. All right, we'll take another look at it, and this is the second time down the floor now that Towson has passed up the easy, or the, the, the fairly easy shot and looked inside. You see the ball get stuffed inside there. Towson came down the floor, and Johnson looked inside to Boyle, and although his shot was pinned against the glass, he'll go to the line for two. But you can see right away that it appears Towson State is going to be looking baseline, looking baseline for something a little easier than the 15-foot jumper. And Ed Marty makes those shots, those uh, 12, 15-footers from the off the foul line. Nice rotation by Boyle. The junior from Springfield, Massachusetts. Towson with more size in this game. The only real big player on the floor for Loyola would be the freshman Mike Wagner. And what you look for from Wagner when he is on offense for Loyola is a very nice soft touch, a kind of a jump hook from the baseline from six to eight feet. It's something that Coach Mark Amatucci has worked on with him just this year. He, he really used to face the basket more in high school. Now they're trying to get him to work from the baseline with a hook. Well, makes one misses one. Towson controls the ball. Here's Fink. He can shoot. Loyola controls the ball with Boney to Phillips. They come quickly. Mike Morrison has a shot. They call a foul. Loyola fouling on the rebound, and Towson will get the ball. This will be the third that's the kind of foul that will not bother Mark Amatucci, the Loyola coach, because Boney was very aggressive to get to the ball and just happened to get his body in on the player fighting for the ball. But that's the kind of aggressive foul that Amatucci can live with because the earmark or the trademark of the Loyola team is aggressiveness 94 feet in the floor. This is a new bunch, of course, uh, trying to be aggressive. His teams have always had that trademark. It's 
this sixth year now. First time we've seen a 2-1-2 two, two, uh, trap yeah. defense there by Loyola as they're trying to make Towson work a little bit to get the ball off the floor. Now they're in their half-court game. Here's Bays. And Boney rebounds for the Hounds, gives the ball to Phillips. I told you, they call Bays the mad bomber. He's not afraid to put it up, and that was a three-point try. Then Phillips trying to uh, control the pace to Mars. Think play Mars. Think is 6-5. He shoots over him. Phillips saves it, and Morrison will start it again. Well, Morrison's over three so far. He's been the attempted offense for Loyola. Wagner uh, had the ball blocked, and now Phillips trying to put it up is fouled. <laughs> <laughs> Fouled by uh, Mark Boyle. Smallest guy on the floor comes up with two straight offensive rebounds. Holloman Phillips, well, <laughs> who's not supposed to do this, winds up getting the ball twice, and Loyola retains possession. Of course, and it back goes to the line. They're, they're kind of long rebounds. He has to be <laughs> in the right spot. You know, if somebody was trapped underneath and it came out to Phillips. That's the stuff you used to get at Loyola High School. No, I never got a rebound because I never really played. You didn't. But if you it, had, it didn't count intramural points. Well, if you had it's those, <laughs> those would have been the kind. Now here's Greatest one of those, the Tigers. Here's one of those things you notice right away. Phillips is left-handed. You and I are both left-handed. I picked that up right away. Watch it. He won't miss. Nice touch. Tie game. 17-20 left in the first half. Again, Loyal with a trapping effort there. The 2-1-2, two, two, full court. Not a whole lot of pressure on the ball. It's just that they're making Towson work it up. Now they pressure Marty Johnson. Somebody's open. Now they play the trap off that zone. And a good and job. He's walking, and he got what they, uh, they tried for. But see, they played that passive zone until they got to half court. And when right. they got the ball to the side, they double teamed uh, Johnson and forced the turnover on the traveling by Johnson. Phillips into Wagner is a freshman. There's a little hook Chris talked of, but it comes off, rebounded by Mark Boyle. Johnson on a break. I think both teams are a little bit tight right now, Vince. That's to be expected. You know, these kids are excited. Uh, this, is, this game is on local television, but it's really more than that because this game is being seen through a great deal of Maryland, southern Pennsylvania, the eastern shore of Maryland, Virginia, and Delaware. And these kids know they're getting exposure. That's kind of exciting. And it's, on the other hand, it's also making them, I think, a little bit tight as we start the game. Talking to some of before the game seemed a little cotton mouth, Chris. The way you get when you're nervous. Ball is off the, uh, the knee of John Bays, and it's a turnover to the going to the Greyhound. Phillips will handle it in from, from Boney. Let's see what Loyola does on offense now. So far, it's been Morrison, and they're looking for the guys in the corners, and they haven't been able to hit him. There it is. Wagner. This is Boney rebounds and will miss. Three shots, a follow-up miss. Tip miss. They had five shots at the hoop, and Towson will control the ball, and now will lose it out of bounds. Real nice job by Loyola on the offensive boards. As I said, they're giving away some height to this Towson State team. But they went to the boards with a vengeance that time, kept the ball alive, and now wind up with it on the inbounds play. Morrison still hasn't found his shot yet. He's 0 for 4 in the opening moments. There's Boney inbounding the ball. Now way out to Mars. Into Wagner, and uh, it's lost off Towson out of bounds. They're 0 for 9 from the field. Nobody's hit a field goal. I want to get the ball back over here to the weak side of the zone. <laughs> Has it started with a man for man in the zone. Here's Marty Johnson with a breakaway against Phillips. Is uh, defended by Morrison. He misses it the side of the ring. And it's fouled by Phillips. 
again, the side I, of the backboard. I think that's just a case of being a little bit tight and trying to do more than you're capable of doing. Marty did not have a good shot here, and then on his his follow-up, he didn't have a good shot either. I think with a, with a spin move, though, Chris, he figured when he got it down there by himself with a lot of momentum, maybe put it up, could get the foul, maybe get lucky and lay it in. You think he should have come back and waited for help? Well, after he missed the first one, which came yeah. off the corner of the board, he really should have taken that ball outside, and instead he tried to put it right back up. But that's okay. He's at the line and gets two. Loyal has committed five fouls with a one and one and Marty misses the free throw. Marty Johnson, a senior from Baltimore, who spent two years at Richmond, got out of here, played last year here, after senior year. Four through the Tigers. Boney fouls Spink and goes for the loose ball. <coughs> And that'll be the limit for Loyola. Well, Michael Fink really took a tough uh, ball right in front of us here. He's all right. But you notice that time Morrison really has brought the ball up the floor about half the time so far for Loyola. Almost as if Mark Amatucci is trying to take some of the pressure off of Hollow and Phillips following uh, the very disappointing effort by both Phillips and Dave Wojcik the other night against Mount St. Mary's. They had a horrible time getting the offense going. So far tonight, Morrison, I think, has brought the ball up at least half the time. Here's Loyola's 1-3-1 one, one now. <coughs> Jeff Nathan playing the uh, end of the ball. First one of the night. Towson takes a 6-3 lead. Let's take a timeout now. We'll be back at the Towson Center in one minute. Courtesy makes a difference when someone walks in your department. You want to show them that, you know, a nice smile on your face, a, a good morning, or a hi, Mrs. Jones, how are you? It just makes them more relaxed and it makes them want to come back. You greet the customer, say hello, and put a smile on your face, and you'll get one back from them. Everybody likes to be treated nice, no matter where they are during the day. So that just makes their trip more enjoyable. Show them a little courtesy, because courtesy dictates who shops at Giant. Here's an important message for all drivers. If your auto or truck insurance has been canceled or refused by State Farm, Allstate, Nationwide, Prudential, or any other company, then call Katz Insurance at 484-8841. No matter what the problem, CATS can get you back on the road with same-day coverage and affordable rates. Plus, you can pay as you drive with CATS insurance. So don't let canceled or refused auto insurance keep you off the road. Call CATS now at 484-8841. Because at CATS insurance, you're always insured. Back at the Towson Center, 7-3. Towson control the ball. Loyola missed it at the left end, and uh, Towson has a... Uh, gone on offense here at the other end and, and missed the shot and Loyola rebounds but a foul is called and this will be foul on uh, Adrian Basie. Well they tried to go back door to Basie and they threw that little lob pass up to him and, and I think the pass might have been a little bit short and that's why Basie couldn't get to it and then he was and trying to get the ball back call for the foul you know. A again it's one of those cases where you you're just trying to make something happen I think both teams are still forcing it a little bit here five minutes without a field goal before Michael Vink hit now it's 14 minutes there's Nat shooting and he misses and Towson's Marty Johnson controls the ball to Fink and he has a man on the side brings a roar to the crowd here. That's good and uh, the free throw. So Loyola... Uh, Marty it, Johnson it, uh, <laughs> helps make this at the other end for Towson. He came up with a steal and they got it down quickly, had a three-on-one break. And, and he they had finished Fink, it off. Fink it with a good dish uh, to Adrian Basie cutting underneath on the left side. So Loyola tighter than Towson, obviously, and trailing by six in the first four and a half minutes, five minutes of the game. 14-19 left in the in the half, and uh, here's Adrian Basie on the line. I really don't think either team has been able to get into its offense so far, Vince. Not it's, at all. It's just very apparent that they're both extremely tight. We've had a couple of turnovers. Both teams playing very aggressively, but neither team really being able to get into its offense. Loyal is 0 for 8. Towson is only 2 for 6. 
Loyola, if Johnson misses, Loyola rebounds. And they have Marcus Allen in the game. And he walks and they turn the ball over. Those same kind of turnovers that have plagued this team in three uh, early season games against Maryland, St. Joe, and Mount St. Mary's. Well, they had 29 turnovers the other night against Mount St. Mary's, and that's simply unacceptable. They had uh, 25, I think it was, against St. Joe's in the consolation round of the MCI tournament last week, and you just can't live with those kind of numbers. You expect a lot of turnovers, you're playing aggressively, but not that high a number. There's Marty Johnson anticipating a move off the baseline of uh, Stephen Dorsey and not getting it, and Loyola gets the ball. So it hasn't, they haven't settled into a rhythm yet at all, either team. Towson, however, leads nine to three. Yet another turnover. You shoot the ball without it. Nice play. Great play by Brian Walker. Picked That's off a tremendous uh, play. Misses. It appeared that Towson was going to get the easy layup, and Brian Walker made the defensive play of the night so far. He skied way up to slap that one away, but it's still Towson's ball. But a nice play by Walker, who might be the best athlete on this Loyola team. So far, Johnson with three steals for Towson. He's making it happen at the defensive end. They miss inside, and from the outside, uh, Mark Boyle misses. Dorsey back. He misses an offensive foul. Well, they're going to call the uh, they're going to call the foul on Dorsey because he leaned into the defensive player. Stephen Dorsey transferred to Towson from Virginia Military Institute, and his brother plays at VMI this year. They're only one of nine sets of, of twins or brothers in the United States playing at the Division I level at two different schools. Who are the other eight? <laughs> well, I'll have that for you at halftime. Just be patient. <laughs> That's great. VMI made a real good run a couple of years ago. Remember the, I think in the NCAA, uh, very disciplined. Oh yeah. Team and again, it as many, uh, well, like Navy or Army or or Air Force. Generally, they don't get the real big kids, so they have to play at a very slow tempo. And VMI has done that very well over the years. Here's Byron Brian, Allman. Brian Allman uh, is uh, going to take a seat for a little while, but uh, appears to be he'll be back in it. I think. Seven fouls on Loyola, five on Towson. We've played six and a half minutes of the first half, and it's been a very ragged game so far. Nine to three, Towson leading. Walker in place of Allman now, along with Morrison and Elam and Nathan and Phillips, who has the ball. Mike Morrison has missed everything he's put up so far, but uh, he'll get it going. Now that's the kind of turnover that will drive Mark Amatucci crazy, the Loyola oh, wow. coach. Loyola did that a lot of times. That's an unforced turnover right, right there. That's what he talked about before the game. I said, how many of the 29 did you give up because of superior defensive talent? He said, not an awful lot of them. Too many unforced turnovers. They nice underneath pass. beautiful pass. And a score for Dwayne Martin. Nice pass from John Bays underneath the Martin. Now we get a foul on Johnson. 11 to 3, Towson ahead, and uh, Loyola forcing the ball now. And Brian Allman will get back in it, and he'll replace uh, Elam. Marcus Elam, a freshman from Virginia Beach. I still haven't figured out what Loyola is trying to do on its offense yet, Vince. They haven't gotten the ball deep enough in to let you know a lot of times, just then, honestly. You mean with the, with the big guard bringing it up? Yeah, I, I'm not really sure where, where they're attempting to go with this offense. They've got their two big guys on the wings. There's um, Phillips. Phillips with a drive. But at least that's an okay play. He had the opening in the middle. It just didn't go. Marty Johnson puts it up. This is well, a good defensive position by Morrison. Will be in trouble if he slow, doesn't slow it up, and he does. Here's Jeff Nat hitting. He's short. And Towson substitutes uh, its celebrated little fifth, sixth man, Tommy Jones. Tommy played in place of uh, Marty Johnson a whole lot in the last game against Clemson, did a real good job. Well, the kid who just took the shot and missed it badly for Loyola, that's his first shot of the year, Jeff Natanz, 
who just is now getting in, in swing with the Loyola basketball team. Yeah, he he was, played on the Loyola soccer team, which just lost in the quarterfinals of the NCAA soccer tournament last week. So a little rustiness showing there by Natanz, and Towson winds up at the line, leading by eight. And that'll be Dwayne Martin, a junior from Hyattsville. There's going to be some sad-looking shooting percentages. Oh, yeah. Towson ahead by nine at 12-3. Interesting, the two styles of the coaches, which we'll talk about at halftime, and we feature both Terry Truax, the head man at Towson, and Mark Amatucci at Loyola. Now we see the first full-court pressure bench tonight for Towson. Ten-point lead, and they'll try to take the ball away from... Phillips and then uh, Alman a foul in the process. Terry Chuax told me the other day that he was fairly pleased with the progress his offense has made, but he thought that his defense had been lagging and that that was the thing that they had to catch up to. And uh, he, he just pulled a, a switch or a surprise on Loyola. He had been playing really a, a passive defense up to that point. He got the 10 point lead and then hit him with that half court. Fresh, and, you uh, know, pressure uh, against the passive defense loyal is still committing a lot of mistakes so uh, with a pressure defense they could really have a problem here's brian alma now to go to the free throw line and make the point but was somebody in the lane yeah somebody's in the lane so it doesn't count it remains 13 three well there's another mistake that's a one and one opportunity he made the free throw and it doesn't count because somebody from loyola was in the lane too quickly so Loyola just gave away a potential of two points on a mistake. Well, here's Towson on a three on two, and they lose the ball trying to get too fancy underneath. Hammond and Phillips, and they bring it up uncontested. Here's Morrison shooting over Fink and missing. Good shot, though. I mean, on, on the rim, I mean, <laughs> not a bad shot. Tommy Jones the other way. Wilson rolls out, and they lose it out of bounds. Off a Loyola man. Tommy Jones in the game now for the first time tonight, and he tried to make something happen right away. He, with a good drive, a strong drive to the hoop, but it wouldn't go, and the ball's knocked out, but Towson still has it. Fink will bring it in. Tommy Jones tries to get to it, and uh, so does Phillips, and it's out of bounds off Loyola. I think Loyola's done a good job so far defensively, and uh, they're not really giving Towson too many follow-up opportunities, but the Towson offense has been non-existent. And they lose it, and the green will bring it in. He misses. Bays rebound. And they come the other way. It's been one and out for Loyola. One and out. One Put and it out. up. And as poorly as they're shooting, they've got to get some help in the offensive boards. They've had none so far. It's I interesting. Think 0 for 12, I think, from the field. Well, Morrison's 0 for 5, and he's a notorious streak shooter for Loyola. So he's just as likely to come back and hit his next five. There's Tommy Jones who's the third man, or the first man off the bench for Towson, their third guard behind Fink and Johnson. He's a veteran player. He's seen a lot of time. He played in 30 games for the Tigers last year. And he's the kind of experienced guy you like to have coming off the bench as your first guard replacement. He's from Towson Catholic High School. 14-3, Towson lead. Point lead. Loyola hasn't made a field goal. I'm surprised Amatucci hasn't called a timeout. Well, I don't know how you tell him to hit field goal. I mean, it's, it's taking pretty good shots, but here's another one. It's Fink made the foul, and uh, as he defense uh, Brian Allman, he went up. It's interesting, and, and sometimes during the telecast, we'll try and show you 
Mark Amatucci has a seat over there on the Loyola bench, and he's never once in his life been in it. He's one of these guys who just paces up and down. He's on his knees. He's in a crouch. Terry Chuax, on the other hand, generally is going to sit there and watch the game. A more introspective type. Here's Byron Allman at the line. Loyola's well, well, dying to get points in some fashion, maybe this way. He rolls it in, and 15-4. Uh, in over eight and a half minutes, Loyola hasn't had a field goal. Incredible. Brian Allman, kind of a line drive shot, rolls off. Here's Eddie Muldrow Eddie in the Muldrow, game now. Loyola High, Towson. graduate, freshman, in the lineup for Towson. Pink to Bays, and they swing it to Muldrow. Jones rolls it in. Tommy Jones. Nice job by Jones. He really didn't want to shoot the ball. He had no one to pass it to. He said, what the heck, we'll go on with it, and he made it. 17 to 4. Towson. Brian Walker will put it up. And they oh. tip it in. They finally get a tip in from Brian Allman. After, I think, 15. 15 shots, they made one. Nice effort by Allman. Maybe that'll be the spark that Loyola needs. 17-6, Towson. Here's Bays. Retaliate. John Bays from Richmond. 19-6. Down the tip and the tip in. You get Nathan. Well, there's the first basket of the year for Jeff Natanz. Yeah. Jeff Natanz from uh, soccer to basketball. 19 to 8. They've got Bays up here in a high post and they look down below and look at this. Twenty-one eight. Towson's, Towson's just doing a better job of running its offense than Loyola. At that time, Fink just ran around a screen and was wide open on the baseline. Here's Brian Alvin. He hit it much better job that time. Loyola kept rotating around until they got the shot they wanted. And Allman was the man who finally came free for the 12-footer. Here's Bay. He missed, but the tip is missed. 21-10. Towson. Here's Elam missing way off. And Loyola will uh, lose the ball as Fink is going in front of the he missed it. He's fouled, however, by Brian Allman. He got two. You know, Chris, you know you talk about not running the offense. Boyle has had a lot of good shots. The ball just not rolling. Here's Nines. He looked like he could really try to protect the ball with his body. Twist it up. Was fouled, and he'll get a shot. We'll take a timeout right now at the Towson Center. Towson State 21, Loyola 10. Here's the timeout. Two forty six. I was driving to the basket with my patented slam dunk when I zigged instead of zagged, and I knew that I'd been had. Two forty eight. We called the Yalich Clinic at four six one pain. Three oh one. My doctor gave me an adjustment, and I knew that I was going to be better. He even told me that a large portion of my bill was going to be covered by my insurance plan at work. Now let me tell you, I may be getting a little older, but thanks to the Yalich Clinic, I can still slam dunk with the best of them. With Yalich Clinic, I feel good naturally. Look up there in the air, it's a plane full of bears. Free holiday toys for good girls and boys, they're coming to Roy. There's gifts you can share, anytime, anywhere. Two bears, two kids. It's Teddy Bear and Friends, available only at Roy Rogers. Just $2.49 each with any purchase. Collect all four, a different bear each week. And take a new friend home for the holidays. Michael Fink on the line for a couple. What enthusiasm. Absolutely. 
Both sides have fell up now. The Towson band is here, an outstanding band. Actually, I enjoy the rampant enthusiasm much more when it's involving the cheerleaders. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you very and much. We were away for a commercial. <laughs> well, you know, Towson is lucky, or uh, Loyola is lucky to be only down by 11 because they have not played well. Pink uses most of the rim and doesn't get it. But I think Loyola might be finally getting on track with its offense now, Vince. The last two times down, they've had better shots. Think of the soft touch makes it 21 to 10. I think what's been interesting so far is Holloman Phillips started the game at point guard for Loyola, and the first replacement by Amatucci was not with Dave Wosick, but it was with Jeff Natanz. And yeah. Morrison, as you see now, is really the man handling the ball. And Elam is just staying in the game, and Morrison throws the ball away. That's his fourth turnover, and, and he's 0 for 7. So Mike is to get on track to get this club back in it. Another one of those unforced turnovers. Right. That will drive a coach crazy. Marty Johnson, who's brought the ball up a thousand times in this situation, beats the double trap. team right there. They try to trap. Gets it back to Bays, and uh, they look for Muldrow on side. Now he gets it over on the side of Everett Cooper. Pressure from Baltimore. Muldrow from Loyola High. Bays. Everett Cooper. From Southern Cooper. Marty Johnson underneath. Good play, but Muldrow can't get it up as he's fouled. Well, they had run the shot clock down to about eight seconds. They finally got the ball down inside. Very good patience by Towson that time running its offense. And to tell you the truth, Vince, I don't think Loyola has run its offense down anywhere near that. I think Towson's been a little more patient running its offense, and they've had a few more opportunities down low. In other words, if you check the points they've scored so far, I bet you 40% of them are from down underneath or resulting in free throws. 45 seconds shot clock in college. This Muldrow looks like a football player. Yeah, Muldrow was uh, made the all-Catholic team last year, the leading rebounder in the league. Towson 23, Loyola 10, and they press all over the court. And uh, although Loyola lost the ball, it was off a Towson man, and Brian Almond will bring it in bounds. And Towson pressing in the backcourt. They go to Morrison, who's uh, hounded by Cooper and tries to get it out of there. Got to have help. Gets it up court, and here's Natten. Down low, it's Elam laying it in. Nice play. Good move along the line, and then he veered out, made the hoop from inside. Well, they beat the press. They got the man open on the baseline, and Elam did what he's supposed to do. 23-12, Towson. Morrison fouls. No, they called an off foul on uh, Marty Johnson. Yeah, pushing Back and in, yeah. So how many fouls on Marty Johnson? His second. Loyal at the other end. Vila misses. Rebound is uh, scrapped underneath. Netanz and Cooper fight for it, and Loyal will retain it. Morrison wanted to take that ball right back up, but he couldn't get the handle on the ball. It was tipped out by Towson, so they get a chance to cut the lead here down to nine. Towson was six for 17. Loyal a four for 18. We've had more substitutions here by Terry Chuax and Amatucci has been able to make for Loyola. That could be a factor a little bit later. Morrison has played in Northwestern High. Three years ahead of Leonard Bias. He knew him well. Foley loses it. And then again, they don't get a shot. Cooper will go and try to lay it up. Let me charge with a foul. Well, Morrison did the only thing he could because that was uh, what they call a cripple in basketball for Everett Cooper. So Johnson gave up the foul, and as you can see here, he's got no chance of coming in on that ball. He went right over the back of Cooper, and Cooper gets to go to the line for two. First on Mike Morrison, 23-12, uh, Towson in front, and Everett Cooper from Southern High on the line. I just wonder how much of a disruption of this Loyola offense has occurred because Billups was, wasn't doing the job to Amatucci's satisfaction as Cooper misses the first. 
and he's decided to go with uh, Morrison, who's basically a shooting guard, and he's, he's doing the ball handling, and, and you wonder how much that affects Morrison and his shooting. Well, I think he's getting the shots he's used to, though, Chris. You know, those perimeter shots. I know, but it's tough. You have yeah. to do double duty. Oh, that's right. I mean, you work hard comes. to get it up the floor. Here he is working hard and getting it up the floor. Passing ahead by 12. Foley. Yeah. Morrison. Man, a little tough man for man. Here's Elam. Oh, yeah, good oh. pass underneath to uh, the Nets hands and lost off Morrison out of bounds. Good that play by a lamb. Yeah, it really was. My, my point about Morrison, though, is, Vince, as you know, it, it, when you're the shooting guard and you're being trusted on to score the points, and now you have to bring the ball up. Oh, yeah. You're shouldering an addition re additional sure. responsibility. There's a lot of energy expended in just getting the ball up the floor and setting the offense in motion. Right. Good play by Almond intercepting, and Morrison again with the ball. Doyle has needed a leader, though, more than anything in this early season. Here's Foley shooting and scoring over Boyle. 24-14. Really, a 10-point game, and uh, it doesn't seem like it, does it? No, it really. It seems like it should be much farther ahead because of all the Loyola mistakes. However, it's only 10 points. Yeah, you watch this game, and you you really look expect to look up at the scoreboard and see Towson winning by 16 or 17. So their lead really is not that big at only 10 points. Neither team has played exceptionally well, but Towson at least looks like it knows what it's doing a little bit more than Loyola. And part of that could be because they're asking Morrison to bring up the ball. Here's Marty Johnson. And an 11-point lead. the second arm and gets the rebound and again to Morrison. Brian Walker to, to Natanz and back to Morrison. <laughs> Almond working baseline and so is Walker for the 10-footer. Here's Natanz. Great defense. Here yeah, it sure is. Every pass is contested, and they're trying to get, get a guy off a screen in the corner, and, and when the ball get gets it. there, there's a defender right in his face, and when they finally swung at weak side over to Natanz, was a man right on him, and he had to kick it back outside. So Towson is making Loyola work very, very hard to get any kind of shot, let alone a good one. There's Almond. One and one, and he gets another. 25-15. Loyola has five people with a field goal. Walker, Netanz, Alman, Foley, and Lamb. Five field goals. Second, no good. He follows it, puts it up, and has it knocked away, and we'll get a jump ball. Or get possession for uh, Towson. If you had told me we'd have 5.53 to go in the half and Mike Morrison hadn't scored a field goal yet, I'd say Towson was being blown out, and it's only 25-15. His fourth. Mike Morrison the other way, he hit it, but did he call it offensive foul? No, a shot at a three-point play. Mike Morrison's first basket comes. After well, they said Boyle stepped in here, and I think the replay will show it. As Morrison was in the air when Boyle stepped in front of him, there's Boyle, 44, and you can see he just kind of yeah. slid over to his left. And you've got to give that player room to come down once he takes off, which in the estimation of the official, Boyle did not do, so Morrison can get the first three-point play of the night for Loyola. 27-17, Towson. And Towson, I think, will lose it out of bounds, and the Hounds will keep it. A break for Loyola. The ball just uh, too long for Bays. He couldn't control it, so Elam will inbound for Loyola. Now they have a chance to cut it to eight. Now let's see what the intent is of this offense as Morrison sets it up from way outside. Yeah, they try to, to get it low, they lose the ball to Walker. Yeah, they try to get the baseline, it's not been there. 
Well, I'll tell you, this is, that's a frantic sortie down the floor, that is. Mark Amatucci pleading his case and losing on the side. Volatile, that's a good word for Mark. <laughs> 517 left in the half. I asked him the other day if he saw any of Bobby Knight in him, and he said, I think you might see some Bobby, uh, some, Mark some of me and Bobby and Knight. <laughs> <laughs> Only in terms of the way he works the game on the sideline, not all that other stuff that Knight gets in trouble for. I don't want the good fathers at Loyola to misunderstand me. Elon, that's a good call. Put his shoulder into one of the defending Tigers, and Tassel got the ball in a turnover. Well, Loyola did a good job of bottling him up there on the baseline. He really, he didn't have a lane to pass to, and then he started throwing the body around and finally knocked him over. All right, let's now take a timeout. timeout. The clubs are taking timeouts. Tigers 27, Greyhound 17. We'll be back in a moment. Competition. At Charlie Rudo Sports, we know the meaning of competition. We compete every day to bring you the latest in sports shoes, apparel, and equipment from leading manufacturers. We compete on value. We compete on service. We compete on inventory. At Charlie Rudo Sports, we go one-on-one -on -one with competition. And we win. Charlie Rudo Sports, the leader. Which this days before Christmas at Lutherville Way, the Watson boys were ready with their Christmas display. There'll be trim trees, wreaths, and ornaments by the score. Exciting Christmas specials many never seen before. Christmas Creation Corner where you can see talented people at work with originality. Your eyes will be dazzled by all they behold. Twinkling lights, shiny balls, just waiting to be sold. The one thing to remember all season through is that the Watson boys are waiting for you. Tigers ahead by 10, 27-17, uh, with 4.58 left in the first half. A ragged first half, especially for the Greyhounds. We went uh, almost nine minutes before they scored a field goal. Well, neither team has shot very well, Vince. I think you'll probably see Towson has a bit of an edge in, on the offensive boards, probably rebounding overall. Loyola still, I'm not sure what they're trying to do. It, it looks like they keep looking to the corner and wanting to kick it back out. There's been nothing on the baseline, and their outside shooting has, hasn't clicked. Fink will get the ball inbounds for Towson now with difficulty, and uh, he ran out of time, and it'll turn it over. Good defense by Loyola. They denied Towson the entrance pass, and after the five seconds, it goes over to the Greyhounds. Morrison from Elam, up the floor. Several of Loyola starters haven't returned. Elam over, and again, they look along the baseline, that and to, to Walker, who's better if he doesn't have to put the ball on the floor. Morrison, long range, hits Count it. it. Soft rim, it looked like. And it's an eight-point game. Towson ahead 27-19. Now, he shot that ball so nicely, I expect him to do it again the next time down because he's a rhythm shooter, and that's the first shot he's taken of the six he's taken tonight that had the look the moment he left, it left his hands. Towson working with Lewis Waller in the game, a kid from Wilmington. And out to Fink, another good shooting guard. Here it is. And he misses Loyola. Elam will rebound. And they throw it away, but I think Towson tipped it. It was knocked off of uh, Fink. Fink and Dorsey, so Loyola maintains it. That last hoop by Morrison was a three-pointer? Yeah, I guess so. 27-20 it is. Yes, it was. 19 feet, 6 inches, the three-pointer. Here's Natten. Again to Morrison. Tries to get it inside to Allman, who has it stripped of Fink. I don't understand Put it that. on the floor. Natten steals it back. He should have thrown it up. He was wide open. Natten's throwing it up, and then he rolls it off, and it's tipped out of bounds by Alam. No, oh, they say it goes off of uh, Towson's uh, John Bays.
inside to Walker, who has it taken away by Bays, who loses it back and will have Loyola in possession after this uh, tie-up. Well, it should have been traveling on Bays. He did a complete flip on the floor there, and they didn't call traveling. I don't understand that. Bays went down on the floor for the ball and absolutely rolled right over with it, and that's traveling. I don't know why they, were, uh, why they weren't on that one, but it's Loyola's ball. And they'll have trouble getting the ball in bounds as the Alarm will try to get it into Morris. 3.30 left in the half, passing ahead by 7, 27, 20. Well, if I'm Loyola now, I want the ball in Morrison's hands. He hit his last shot. He was wide open the last time down the floor and didn't take it. There it is. From Nadens to Morrison. Not getting much from anybody else. The Alarm puts it up. He misses and Towson will rebound the ball with Mark Boyle. Well, Elam. Just I looked away and I didn't see what happened. Loyal of possession on a Towson uh, walking violation. Again, Morris as Loyola tries to set it up with its people working the baseline and out front. Natten's uh, underneath. Walker. Here's Morrison. Good rotation. He misses a follow-up. Is good. Allman. Nice play. Five-point game. 27-22. 2:45 left in the half. Waller with it. To Dorsey. Puts it up strong and rolls it in and out. Ryan Allman gets it to Morrison. They have a three on two, but they don't take advantage of it. Now Morrison puts it up, makes it, but it's an offensive foul. Ooh, I don't know about it. I'd like to see that one again if we got it in the truck. If anything, I thought they were going to call player, uh, they were going to call uh, traveling on well, they Morrison. Had a, they had a three on two. Towson got back and uh, quickly equalized it. Morrison turned into him and uh, put it up, but they, uh, they call offensive foul. So. Instead of a two-point game, a three-point game. Well, it must have happened. As he did the spin, he must have pushed off with his yeah. right hand because... They, they going up for the right hand, he might have pushed for the other hand as he turned into the, the defender. So, as we near halftime, 2.30 away, Towson's lead at one point, 12 points, has been cut down to five, but they will have the ball. Well, Vince, I think Loyola has done a much better job the last few times down the floor. Uh, even though they're still not hitting a very good percentage of shots, at least now they are getting, I think, the kind of shots that they want to get. You know, I really think Towson's defense, though, has really been better in the last little while than it has been at any other time, despite the fact Loyola scored. The idea of the game is to put the ball in the basket. Loyola missed a lot of easy shots against bad Towson defense early, and now they're making them despite some pretty good Towson D. All right, let's go over to Vern. Vern. <laughs> the stands and it is awfully loud. Let me grab this guy right here. Got him a new hairdo for you, isn't it? Yes, yes, number one. looks like they're crumbling a little bit. Only a five-point game. Let's go back to Chris. Yes. That's the number one, huh? Along York Road, they are. I think that guy is a weirdo. Who is that guy in the sunglasses? <laughs> Almond has six points. Mars and five for the Greyhounds. Fink leads Towson with six. Martin, Jones, and Johnson each have four. Towson with the ball in the last 2.30 of the half, leading by five. Dave Wojcik in the game now for the first time for Loyola. Number 13. Number 13. Wojcik and Nathan's out front. Morrison gets a rest. Almond playing good ball, steals it, loses it. Uh, Dorsey gets it back and will have a foul. I'm surprised how much PT, as uh, Vital would say, I'm surprised how much playing Probably. time uh, Jeff Natanz has been getting because, as I said, he just started practicing a week ago. I tell you, he hadn't heard him, though. There's a <laughs> scramble for the ball on the inside, the subsequent they, foul. Boney and Wagner started and sat down, and, and so did Holland and Phillips, and none of that trio has returned. Steve Dorsey, Stephen Dorsey, who whose brother is Stephen Dorsey at VMI. Stephen Dorsey played at Cardinal Gibbons with Marty Johnson, who, of course, is a second, but Towson will tip it out of bounds. It goes over to the green and gray. 
28-22, Towson ahead. Dave Wojcik, first opportunity with the ball. Brother Doug, of course, was a guard on the terrific Navy team the last two years, which featured David Robinson in NCAA tournament appearances. Looks a lot like his brother. A lamb here's up, put it up to, by uh, Alman. Missed Towson rebound. Bays up the floor, gets the ball up to uh, Mark Boyle. There's a drive for John Bays. And he'll be charged an offensive foul. Well, the play was wide open, too, if we can see it again, because all they did is Bays just ran right past his man, Elam. You can see how wide open he is, but then he, they, Loyola got some backside help on the baseline, and Bays ran right over him. Well conceived by Towson. It's just that Bays never saw the guy on the baseline. And the guy planted and was there a split second before Bays bothered him. Here's Wojcik. It really does remind you of Doug, his brother, who played it with David Robinson in Navy. The Lamb will put it up. It's partially blocked and then rebounded by Dorsey. That's not the kind of shot Anacucci wants. I tell you, this is... Oh, the slam both ends of the floor pretty good. He slams into Bays and now helps Bays up. Brian Almond. Rick Bays is going to wind up being an orthopedic patient if this keeps up. That's twice he's been on the floor in the last 30 seconds. He was run over that time, but no whistle. Towson keeps the ball. 115 and a half. Towson ahead by six. Michael Spink, quick move, tries to get around Nathan, who stayed with him. Good defense. Stolen by Elam, who comes down, loses the ball, stolen. Oh, my goodness. Beautiful steal by Tommy Jones. Should have never Look, happened. Looking for Wojcik, I think, or looking for somebody to give it to. He lost it. Now Wojcik tries to get it back. Tommy Jones underneath the three. Four points for Bay. Well, there's a big turnaround. It should have been 28-24. Instead, it's 30-22 to because of the turnover by Loyola when they had a three-on-one break. A four-point change. Mike Colclaw checks in for the Tigers now, so he's the eighth player or the ninth player who's participated here in the half for Towson State. Terry Chuax has not been shy about running in players. Now, ideally, you want to play about eight, nine at the most. Doyle has played ten in the early two games and as many tonight looking for combinations. Here's Fink. Good bounce pass, but it eludes Colclaw. Good reaction on the baseline by Allman. Allman's uh, the outstanding player for Loyola so far. I think at both ends he's made some good defensive plays. Think with Natan playing him. Strong. And Colclaw moves a foot and it turn it over. Now Loyola with 15 seconds, trailing by eight points. Might play for one. They have eight seconds. Walker can't get a shot. Bounce pass in the corner. Somebody better put it up. Elam does. Misses, but is fouled. And will get a chance with two seconds to cut the lead to six. So an unartistic first half. To say the least. Oh, yeah. Marcus E. Lamb, the third, the player of the year on Dorsey in the state of Virginia last year. A lot of good players come out of Virginia. And that's the kind of guy that Amatucci's out there recruiting. So when you're ever the player of the year in any state, let alone Virginia, you're a pretty good player. So he's got high hopes for this youngster. From Virginia Beach. From Virginia Beach, Marcus E. Lamb. He hit the first one, 23 for the Hounds. Towson, 30 to 23. He hit another one. And with two seconds to go, Towson tried to go length of the court, put the ball up from midcourt. Johnson's shot is no good. It's Tommy Jones' shot. And the half ends 30 24 Towson. So that's the story here at the Towson Center. As each team looks for its first win in the Towson Club, got off to a 12 point lead. Loyal has crept back into it. 
and trails by six at half. We'll be back with some halftime activity after this message. Well, I feel good. Naturally, I feel good. That's the way it should be. I feel good. Naturally. With Yalich Clinics, I feel good. If you're suffering with pain, then call the Yalich Clinic for a free consultation to determine if chiropractic can help you. Check your yellow pages for the location nearest you or call 461 Pain. That's Yalich Clinic. With Yalich Clinics, I feel good. Look up there in the air, it's a plane full of bears. Available only at Roy Rogers. Just $2.49 each with any purchase. Collect all four, a different bear each week. And take a new friend home for the holidays. Bonded Jewelry says, if you'll build a stairway to the stars to engage her, a diamond ring from us will do the rest. If you're ready to spell out your intentions, a beautiful ring from Bonded will do the rest. If you've programmed her into your future, an engagement ring from Bonded will do the rest. Beautiful ways to engage her. Bonded Jewelry. With five dealerships, Tate can make you a deal of fortune at Tate Dodge and Chrysler Plymouth in Glen Burnie, at Tate Dodge and Nissan in Annapolis, and Tate Chrysler Plymouth in Frederick. Pick from over 1,000 cars and trucks in stock at prices that'll make you a winner. Because we buy for five, you save at every one. At Tate, we won't make your head spin. Just make you a great deal on a Dodge, Chrysler, Plymouth, or Nissan. Nobody has to pay Six points out to lead at halftime, Chris. And Loyola came in. Maybe a ship without a rudder looking for some leadership, looking for somebody to score, somebody to put people in a position to score. And uh, they're not making shots. They fell behind by 12, and now they're back in it trailing by only six, but uh, Towson's been the more impressive club. Yeah, I think so, and I think the Mark Amatucci's probably happy to only be down by six oh, at yeah. this point, Vince, because his team didn't play well and, and, again, threw the ball away too many times. But I think, to me, it was interesting that he had Morris and basically his two guard or his shooting guard bringing the ball up the floor. I don't know if that means he's lost any faith in Holloman Phillips, his junior college transfer player, but that was something we weren't expecting tonight. Well, early in the game, it seems they got the ball up the floor. That wasn't the immediate problem. They, they've missed shots. It, it, it's a game of put the ball in the hoop, and you can be doing a lot of things wrong, but if you make shots, you know, it covers up for so much. As we said later, Towson plays some pretty good defense, and Loyola made its, its move offensively when they were playing good defense by making shots. Yeah, so. well, I don't think Loyola really has run its offense no. or gotten the shots that it wants to get. So we're at halftime here with Loyola down by six, and we want to talk a little bit about the two coaches involved here tonight, Mark Amatucci for Loyola and Terry Chuax for uh, Towson. The two coaches tonight are about as dissimilar in personality as coaches could be. If Mark Amatucci is fire, then Terry Chuax is ice. Both want to elevate college basketball, however, here in Baltimore. Terry Chuax played with Joe Harrington and Gary Williams, also now Division I head coaches. He was an assistant to Dean Smith at North Carolina and to Morgan Wooten, the legendary high school coach at DeMatha. Truax, now in his fifth year at Towson, has an appreciation of his profession, fostered by his apprenticeships with some very solid people. You have to take all the good things and the finer points from the people who are very, very excellent in the field and just try to blend that into your own personality and most of all be yourself. Al McGuire is a great example. He was obnoxious, so his players were obnoxious. And I, I, uh, I, I don't. I really don't know. I think if, I don't know if I can characterize our coaching and that type of thing. I think our players could probably speak more about that. But probably overall, I'd have to say Dean Smith would be the person that uh, that I would feel best to uh, model a program after. His practices are businesslike. The court, his classroom. But there's some quiet humor in Terry Chuax as he tries to explain his personality. I'm kind of a, I guess, a, a Dick Buckus kind of Santa Claus, teddy bear, lovable kind of guy. And, and the players uh, sometimes reflect that, sometimes they don't. But uh, it's just not my way to be, uh, 
uh, totally uh, emotional into the game because I want our players to play with some emotion, but I think they have to play the game with reason. I think you have to constantly encourage, and I'll never go to another Loyola game and sit behind the bench because I can't see because the coach is walking back and forth all the time. One, two, three. At Loyola, Mark Amatucci begins his sixth year as the Greyhounds coach, and whether it's a practice session or a game, he wears his heart on his sleeve. Amatucci is outspoken, forceful, emotional, aggressive, and that's how his teams play. We want to be uh, aggressive and emotional under control, and I think there's a difference. Um, you know, somebody who doesn't handle responsibility very well uh, lets their emotions get the best of them. Um, somebody who does handle responsibility very well uh, gets themselves mentally prepared emotionally and is able to play within the confines of what the teacher wants you to do. So in that case, we want our kids to be aggressive and emotional, but we don't want to be out of control. Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Half the game is getting the kids to believe in you as a total person. And uh, you know, you can be the greatest coach in the world and know all the X's and O's in the world, but if the kids don't respect you and they don't believe in you, then uh, you're not going to get the job done. Despite Loyola's slow start, Amatucci believes that by January, his young team will be ready to compete for the ECAC Metro Championship. Okay. Two interesting people. Yeah, they really are. Good Different job. styles, but I think they're both on track to making both schools successful. And, and I think a lot of people maybe don't understand that Towson State, which plays in the uh, East, East Coast, Coast Conference, Conference and Loyola, which plays in the East Coast Athletic Conference Metro Division, yeah. are both eligible to compete against the Notre Dames, Kentuckys, Indianas if you know, they win their conference tournament. A couple of years ago, two years ago, Loyola 215, an eight-point lead with the ball at home from going to the NCAA to the, you know, it's big 64. That's right. And well, they lost to Fairleigh Dickinson. Towson got within one game last year uh, in the final game and lost to Bucknell, and uh, they went along. So uh, that's the way it is. And, and with teams like Bucknell, Lafayette, Lehigh, Ryder, Drexel, Hofstra, Delaware, Towson in a good league. We'll tell you about Loyola's league in a little while. Okay, well, basketball, Bernie, what's he doing? basketball is more than just the uh, hoops and the rebounds. It's uh, the atmosphere, which we're going to find out about from Vernon Glenn. Vernon. There he is. There he is, Vernon. All right. Okay, guys, I understand that I have some of the wildest women in the building. These are the, these are the Loyola cheerleaders. And we're going to talk to one right now. Let's bring you on over. All right, what, what is your name? Jody Lombardo. Jody Lombardo. <laughs> All right, now, it didn't look like you guys had too much to cheer about in the early going. I mean, you didn't get your first basket till midway of the first half, but now you're only down six. What do you think? Oh, it's great. We have a lot of confidence in our young team. We're going to come back and win it. We're Loyola. We're taking it home to Loyola. Tell me this, do you, do you have any kind of a special cheer that you guys want to do real quick? Yeah, we do. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Do it. Go ahead. Those are the Loyola cheerleaders, but we have much more than that. Let's take a look at the fine institution of Loyola College. Loyola College in Maryland was founded in 1852 by members of the Society of Jesus. It is the ninth oldest among 28 Jesuit colleges and universities in the United States. The college occupies a scenic 45-acre campus in the northern suburbs of Baltimore City. Two major divisions comprise Loyola, the College of Arts and Sciences and the Joseph A. Selinger S.J. School of Business and Management. It offers 30 undergraduate majors and five pre-professional programs. The curriculum provides a strong background in liberal arts and a broad selection of elective courses that encourages students to stretch their skills, talents, and abilities. There are approximately 2,800 undergraduate students enrolled at Loyola, representing 24 states and 450 high schools. 40% of these students are commuters. The remaining 60% campus residents, living in dormitories and apartments. The ratio of male to female students is 50-50. More than half of the freshman class ranked in the top fifth of their high school class. Loyola fields 14 intercollegiate teams competing at the NCAA Division I level. The college also sponsors club and intramural sports. The list of student activities ranges from various academic clubs to special interest groups. This is Loyola.
the Jesuit College of Maryland. All righty, okay, that was Loyola College, but now we've got the Townsend State cheerleaders. I was just talking to the Loyola cheerleaders, and they say they're the loudest cheering bunch in the building. What do you guys say? All right, let's bring you, let's bring you in here. What is your name? Karen. Karen, are you nervous? I mean, you're only up by six points after you had that big lead. Are you kidding? We're going to win. We're not nervous. Well, that's the that is the true confidence of a cheerleader. And with that, let's take a look at the institution of Towson State University. Once again, U.S. News and World Report has chosen Towson State University as one of the top ten comprehensive colleges and universities in the East. This is the second consecutive time Towson has been selected. An achievement made possible by our continuing commitment to meet the educational needs of the community and the state. Towson State University is conveniently located just inside the Beltway on more than 300 acres in Baltimore County. The university provides a broad liberal arts education with professional programs in many areas such as nursing, business, and the arts. Towson State is big enough to provide the atmosphere of a large university, yet small enough to be as intimate as a small college. Quoting from U.S. News and World Report, Towson has transformed from a teacher's college of 1,500 students in 1960 to a university of 15,000, showing that rapid growth doesn't have to mean loss of quality. Towson State is also named in the survey as one of the best buys in college education in the country. Towson State's residence halls join the educational and social sides of campus life, and almost 3,000 students live on campus. Towson also provides the means to get the best education possible. It has a strong research-oriented library, and many accessible computers are available for all students, plus an educational experience that extends beyond the classroom with special course offerings and even overseas study, as well as an internship program that allows students to gain practical work experience in the field of their choice. Towson State also boasts a student-faculty ratio of 17 to 1, and over 58,000 people have received degrees from TSU. These are just a few of the reasons why Towson State University has been ranked among the top 10 comprehensive colleges and universities in the East. All righty, so what started off as a potential blowout for Loyola ends in only a six-point lead for the Greyhounds at 30 to 26. A kind of a wild affair that we've got and 20 more minutes of basketball to go. Chris and Vince will be back right after this. This Christmas, a lot of kids just might go to bed with visions of baby-bound puppies. And baby-bound purries dancing in their heads. Well, every time you buy any sandwich, fries, and a drink at Hardee's, you can get one of the babies for only $2.59. There's a new one every week, so by Christmas Eve, you could have all five. Which might give you the chance to make some dreams come true on Christmas morning. No matter what the sport, visit the leader in sports apparel and equipment, Charlie Rudo Sports. Charlie Rudo scores big with Russell Athletic Activewear. Russell Athletic, America's premium weight sweatshirts and pants are good fitting, heavier, and shrink less than ever. Russell Athletic sweats are made to last, so when you want to be comfortable and still look good, don't sweat it. Come to Charlie Rudo's and ask for Russell Athletic sweats. Charlie Rudo Sports, the leader. What would I really want for the holidays? To remember the things that really matter, especially the little things. My holiday wish? To be the one this year who decides where to put the mistletoe. If my kids could be even half as happy as I'd like them to be this year, I'd have gotten my biggest holiday wish. Honey. May all your holiday wishes come true from the makers of distinctly different Canada Dry for when your tastes grow up. Let me do the talking. Good morning, sir. Congratulations. You've been selected by our computer for a free demonstration of the amazing rug massager. Now, Melroy, isn't she a beauty? She does all the work. We'll do all the paperwork. Now, yeah, we'll even handle the contract for you. What's that name, sir? It's Gelfman. Dick Gelfman. Smile, boys. 
News 11's Dick Gelfman. Aren't you glad 11's on your side? Not now, Leroy. Halftime at Towson State, the Tigers, the home standing team, leading by 30 to 24. Chris's statistics, uh, I don't think either club wants to brag about percentages, but here they are. The numbers, uh, Towson is uh, 8 for 22 from the field, Loyola 8 for 32, which very briefly and quickly would be 25%, would it not? Uh, it? Yeah, 25% and 36%. Those are pretty bad numbers. Even the free throws are bad numbers. Towson with uh, uh, trailing and rebounds. I'm yeah. a little surprised to see that. I thought Towson did a little better job on the offensive board, but Loyola must have gotten more than I thought. And the turnovers, not that far apart, but 19 yeah. turnovers for uh, Loyola and 16 for Towson. That's they're, unacceptable. They're ahead of the pace from last, last game, and they had 29. They'll have 35 at this rate. Here are the Loyola scoring leaders. Alman has really done the best of job at both ends, has eight points. Mike Morrison, five, and Two Morrison Two for ten from the floor. For, is that right for yeah. Morrison? Okay. And the Towson scoring leader, Michael Fink has six, and Dwayne Martin, Tommy Jones, Marty Johnson each have four for the Tigers, a four-point. Well, I think things have got to get better for both teams. I think the initial tightness is over. We're going to find out when we come back to the Towson Center for the start of the second half. We'll be right back. Christmas days before Christmas at Lutherville Way, the Watson boys were ready with their Christmas display. There'll be trim trees, wreaths, and ornaments by the score. Exciting Christmas specials many never seen before. Christmas Creation Corner where you can see talented people at work with originality. Your eyes will be dazzled by all they behold. Twinkling lights, shiny balls, just waiting to be sold. The one thing to remember all season through is that the Watson boys are waiting for you. We ask the customer directly, what do you think of this idea? And they will tell you. And a lot of companies don't take the time to ask. And I think that's one, one way among many that Giant's very different from other retailers. So in every aspect, if a customer communicates to Giant, number one, they get an answer. Number two, we follow through and go that extra step to see what we can do to prevent it from happening again. We, through the Consumer Affairs Department, give the customer a way to contact Giant, to make it easy for them to say, hey, I want to let you know what I think. <laughs> At the Towson Center, everybody having a good time and a lot of people. I'll tell you, it's one of the better crowds there, probably. Place seats about 5,000, Chris. And uh, 3,500, I guess, would be a, a fair guess at the crowd tonight for this 39th game between Towson State and Loyola in the series. Loyola leads. Uh, 25 to 13. Towson won last year's game at Evergreen, 98 to 82. Loyola began uh, with three people who haven't gotten back into the game, and they're, they're, they're coming in the second half with the same people who were in there at the end of the half. Morrison and Allen, Alman and Nathan and Walker and Elam. Towson with the ball has possession as the second half gets underway, and Marty Johnson has it. Marty Johnson with John Bays and uh, Adrian Basie, Mark Boyle, and Michael Fink. Fink and Johnson, the strength of the club, really, in the backcourt, working with it, looking inside. Basie puts it up, misses, and Morrison is called with a foul for pushing to get the rebound. That'll be his fourth, I think. Oh, no, wait a minute. I, th I thought they'd called it on Towson. You're right. Evidently, they called it on Morrison, and that's a very painful foul for Loyola because that is number four on oh, Morrison. Oh, man, you know, that's bad. Now, he's saying three, and uh, Morrison holding up three. Is it three or four, do you know? Well, anyway, let's uh, concentrate on who has the ball. And we'll get that in a minute. Foul number four on Morrison. Boy, that's a tough break. Here's Bay, uh, Bay and he misses follow-up and a foul, obvious foul, as Adrian Basie tries to put up Bay's miss. Basie rebounded and Towson goes to the line for two. Well, Bay's is 6'7". He's a big guy, but he doesn't mind shooting that 15 or 16-foot jumper. He's tried it now from both sides of the perimeter here in the second half. He's missed, missed both times, but Basie did a good job of gaining position underneath for the rebound and then was fouled as he attempted to put it back up and in. Boney uh, replaces... Morrison, Chris, so was he's fourth. And Adrian Basie from Germantown, Maryland, a sophomore, 6'4", makes the first. 
Well, it's tough, you know, with a very young team to begin with, and Morrison is your rock out there in terms of experience. Now he's on the bench. He's not only your rock in terms of experience, he's also your leading scorer. So that's a very tough hurdle now and that bring Amatucci it, has to overcome. Bringing the ball up and all that sort of thing, and now it uh, becomes the allowance job. He's to Johnson in to steal it, but they be able to avoid it and get it to uh, Nat Tans up the floor. Johnson again all over the place trying to take the ball away from Nathan. Almond inbounds the bony. Dawson ahead 32 24. And the pressure is intense with a good man for man defense. The ball stolen and taken in for a hoop is Adrian Basie. First jam of the night. 10 point lead. Here's Almond. And he'll be fouled. Well, there's that inexperience against uh, and that has made a bad pass to the wing. He didn't see the defensive pressure, which came up, stepped up in the terms of pace, and, and the person of pace, he just went on in for the easy basket. And if that happens again, I think we'll see a very quick timeout in the half here by Amatucci. Ten-point lead, Almond can cut it to eight. So kind of a low trajectory anyway. And that ball will rattle out of there if unless it's put up with the right touch. 34-25, Johnson by nine. Marty Johnson, who played in the Robbins Center at the University of Richmond for two years. Nice backdoor move, unreal. Nice move. Adrian Basie. 36-25. Now Tans brings it up. Has it taken away. Now come the other way. Michael Fink. Will be fouled by Natton. And Fink will get two. Well, what's happening here is Towson State is simply exploiting the weakness of oh, the Loyola wow. game right now. There's the drive Smart. by Bayes. But what Towson is doing is they double team the ball that time at the point they made the bad pass, came up with the interception. Invariably. And, it, and it's as obvious tonight as it was the other night when Loyola played Mount St. Mary's that Mark Amatucci really is going to have to bear with the development of his young people in terms of getting the ball up the floor because they really have not done a good job of it. Michael Fink makes the first and gets another. Loyola's problem in games against three tough opponents Lack of a point guard. Just haven't been able to get anything going. They get the ball past midcourt a lot of times. Fink makes both, and Towson has a 38-25 lead. Well, you'd expect Fink to do that. He, he's the best Eight free throw points. shooter on the team, 84%. Eight points for Michael. Towson playing real tight defense here. The Lamb has a block, gets it back. He's fouled under there by Mark Boyle. Nice job by Marty Johnson though, on the defense. He actually tipped that ball away. Yeah. And usually you get called for over the back, but he, he did it so cleanly that time there was no foul. Nonetheless, Elam was able to get the ball back and drive and draw the foul. <laughs> Said before, um, with the Phillips in the game in the, in the back court along with Elam. He said before the game, Elam who hadn't played, had played very little, the freshman. Another free throw, he hit two at the half, has a high arc on the ball. 38-26, Towson. Tries to cut it to 38-27. That's the first time tonight, I think, Vince, that Loyola's been able to pass both ends of uh, free throws. Marty Johnson now being played by Phillips and is able to make that semi-spin move and get it up. It's almost like Marty Johnson trying to get a mismatch down low against Billups and the foul is called. Well, he and Billups were going at it pretty good there. And finally the official underneath 
blew the whistle because Marty had pushed off. Marty doesn't look 6'2", Chris. I'll tell you, it says that, but he's backing a little guy in and there's a foul. Third on Johnson. Oliver Phillips from St. Louis. Boney gets it into Walker, who has it stripped. Johnson loses it again at mid-court as Phillips comes up with it. Oh, well, telegraphed it. Gave it away. Marty Johnson against Dalman lays it in. 40 20. Damn it, she's got to call a timeout. There it is. Timeout. Another unforced error by Loyola. It's simply a bad pass, a pass to the wrong guy, and his guards just aren't seeing the floor, Vince. Yeah. That was enough for Amatucci. Well, actually, actually the Chris, uh, the official says put his hand on his head and it's heading it. It's his timeout. So let's take a timeout here with Towson leading Loyola. Towson 40, Loyola 27. Can opening cat owners. Ooh, you may be weary. Cat owners do get weary. Opening can after smelly can. Why mess with that pen? Just try a little tenderness. See, cause cats really dig the taste of improved Tinder Vittles brand cat food. So try a little tenderness. Tinder Vittles, why mess around with anything else? Well, I feel good. I Naturally, I feel good. I feel good. That's the way it should be. I feel good. I feel good. Naturally, with Yalich Clinics, I feel good. If you're suffering with pain, call the Yalich Clinic for a free consultation. We only accept those cases we truly believe we can help. Check the yellow pages for the clinic nearest you or call 461-PAIN. With Yalich Clinics, I feel good. I feel good. Here's Marty Johnson driving and uh, uncontested layup as uh, Almond was with him, but uh, chose not chose not to foul him. We get Towson, we get a loyal man injured. Almond uh, looks like a cramp, and they're, they're trying to work that out. And uh, that was the reason for the timeout. And it's not a charge timeout to Loyola. Loyola shooting 0 for 1 the second half. Towson 3 for 5. Facey has six points in the second half and a total of eight for the ball game for the Towson Tigers. Uh, Adrian Basie. Well, let's hope it's nothing more than a cramp over there, Vince. Uh, Loyola has already had its run of bad luck early in the season when freshman Marcus Hamright went yeah. down with a dislocated knee and subsequent damage to the medial collateral ligament in his left knee. He's out for the season. Chris, it, it looks like he, I, I just don't. I, it looked like a cramp, and I'm not sure at all now I, as they continue to work on Almond at the end line. Loyola has Nattens and Phillips. Along with Walker and uh, Boney and Elam. Towson and has Marty Johnson. Along with Adrian Basie and Michael Fink. John Bays and Mark Boyle. Both coaches really attempted to downplay the, uh, the importance of this game coming into this game this week. And uh, I don't think the players felt that way. This is a wonderful opportunity. They've never been on TV before. And... Uh, and I, I think that showed in their play early in the first half. Maybe they've settled down some. But, you know, it is an important game, Vince, as we take a look again at the injured player. Well, we, ho we hope that he's going to be all right. But, but, but it is an important game, if for no other reason than Loyola's 0-3 and, and Towson is 0-2. And, 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 you know, you don't like to keep racking up O-ands. You, you want to have right. a win. You know, one thing about it, both these clubs, I mean, it hadn't been an artistically played game at all. But both these clubs have played teams about as strong as they'll play this year coming into this game tonight. I mean, Towson had lost to Winthrop and Clemson. And on the other hand, it was uh, Maryland, St. Joe, and, and uh, Mount St. Mary's who beat Loyola. Here's a play where apparently uh, Brian Almond was hurt. And uh, we, we see uh, we see him uh, uh, taking the ball out. And at this point, did Marty Johnson trip over him as he as he went back? I don't think so. I, I really don't know. I don't it just see any damage there buckle. as he has the ball. And, uh, yeah, and let's take buckle. another look at it, Vince. He and we can see it from this angle. 
No, I, There's nothing wrong with the play. He's fine there, yeah, but as yeah. he takes the ball across the end line, it's either Johnson stepped on him, perhaps his Achilles tendon, or his calf. Know. He well, tried to get up, Chris, and then he, yeah. he, he had it. The pain was so much, he had to go back down again. So he's leaving the ball game, and they're going to get him some treatment in the locker room. And Towson uh, will go on defense as Loyola has the ball. 40-27 Towson leads. 16.50 left in the ballgame. The Lamb looking inside the Boney. That's his shot, but he misses an air ball. And Fink hits the rebound for Towson. Marty Johnson against Phillips. Bay's good. Feed to Fink. Wide open back door as Walker was thinking something else 42 to 27 Towson ahead by 15. Another illustration of how much better Towson has run its offense tonight. They've had a number of those backdoor opportunities and when they're, when they're not working the backdoor because the Loyola guards are overplaying outside Vince yeah. they've been able to they've been able to make at least the pass to the guy free on the baseline so their shot selection their ability to free people up has been far superior. And let's face it, you're going to make more layups than 15-footers. That's right. You can't win the game with 15-footers. Walker's having a tough time. Here's the Lamb with good percentage shot, and he banks it in. 42-29, Towson. Well, that time they had the ball out in the corner, and they got Marty the Johnson three hurries it up and goes all the way and misses. Follow-up, no good, and Walker will contest for the rebound. Boney is hit in the face, but appears to be okay and will stay in it. Towson will get the ball in bounds off the line. Mm. The rate this is going, Loyola is going to be the biggest customer of Blue Cross Blue Shield this year. That's right. <laughs> off the foot of uh, Towson, Adrian Basie, and uh, Loyola will bring it up. Loyola's Mike Morrison is on the bench with, uh, with four personal. They're saving him for a run late. But they can't get too far behind. It's a 13-point deficit right now. Phillips on the foul line. Towson's defense is really impressive. And then it's man for man pretty much all the way. And Loyola not getting, and now they double-team the ball. That drive. This is Towson's Marty Johnson comes up with it. Dribbles through the pack and will give it underneath and a layup for Adrian Facey. 44-29. Good feed for Marty Johnson. Again, they steal the ball. Elam gave it away and Marty Johnson gets it. Good feed underneath. And it's up and in again for Adrian Facey. 46-29. Points scored off of turnovers. Oh, way, man. way in Towson State's favor. Every time Loyola makes that wide pass to the wing, something bad seems to happen. That's right. To make the wide pass to the wing, the ball's a bounce pass. The pass is quick over and gets it and goes the other way. 46 Competition. At Charlie Rudo Sports, we know the meaning of competition. We compete every day to bring you the latest in sports shoes, apparel, and equipment from leading manufacturers. We compete on value. We compete on service. We compete on inventory. At Charlie Rudo Sports, we go one-on-one -on -one with competition. And we win. Charlie Rudo Sports, the leader. There are a lot of uh, companies who have words and slogans uh, to try and describe who and what they are. At Giant, we also have words that we use. We talk about quality and service and value and friendliness, and we talk about caring. Uh, but to us, uh, they're not just words. They're, they're way of life. We live those words every day. Towson, uh, Basie's hit a couple of them here. I mean, underneath, the, the ball's gone to Adrian Basie on feeds from Marty Johnson a couple of times. Towson has shot the ball nine times and made six.
but the turnovers have resulted in some very easy baskets. Loyal, on the other hand, has only had four balls put up. Their offense hadn't been able to get the ball close enough for shots. They've made one out of four. So Towson is dominating right now, 46 to 29. Wagner in the ball game now. He started, he's back, and Alman has returned the game, so apparently it was a cramp for Brian Alman. Natan's again over to Alman. No penetration, I mean, nothing inside. Here's Boney putting it up and in from the foul line, inside the foul line, 46-31. That's a nice shot for Boney after throwing up an air ball as last time. That'll help the confidence. Again on the weak side, but the ball goes to, to uh, Bays on a little feed from Dorsey, 48-31. Mike Morrison is back, that could be five. And that's five, he's gone. A charging foul on Mike Morrison, he's out of the game, and that'll be uh, a tremendous blow to Loyola, who will lose their... Well, if it's on Morrison, no, no, it's, it's the fifth, yeah. He was only back in the game for 25 seconds. Yeah, that's it, he's gone. So they're, they're really hard-pressed now. I mean, without a leader, and a guy who might have been getting into a little bit of the rhythm of it when he got his fourth and had to leave and sat down, and now they're in real big trouble. Well, there's no here question. I mean, he just he came in here and, and tried to make something happen where there was nothing going on. The defender was there. Right. So Dwayne Martin just stood his ground and, and made it. And Tass will get the ball. Uh, Dwayne Martin made a good defense defensive play to take Morrison out of the game in five person. Good Loyal job to, by Phillips. Yeah, Phillips forced a turnover there. 48-31, Towson ahead with uh, 13.45 left. Now the guard's got to get some help here when he reaches the yeah. top of the key. Every one of his passes are looking at him. That's right, you've got to come to the ball when the pass is made. Here's Big Wagner, the six foot ten. Here's Natten, missed it. Jones grabs the rebound, but it's stolen back by John Boney. Under to Wagner, who lays it in. Wagner's only a freshman. And a six ten freshman really sometimes hasn't caught up with his, his body. Yeah, he's gonna he'll be, he'll okay. be all right. Takes time. Yep. Emma Tucci's got some good young players here, but it's going to take time. 48-33, Towson lead. Tommy Jones, Marty Johnson, as they take a little time off the clock, 15 seconds, and here's Jones going to bomb one and hit it. Tommy Jones from Towson Catholic. Phillips comes the other way, 51-33, Towson. Nattens. Gets it in low to Brian Almond and back to Almond and the Billups outside. Jones playing tough defenses is the Towson club generally. Nat drives misses Towson rebound. Had three people under there. Tommy Jones. Twelve minutes left in the game. Towson ahead, 51-33. Marty Johnson, good bounce pass under the Dorsey lays it in. Marty Johnson doing a lot of things. Showtime that time. Well, that was a great bounce, bounce pass. Twenty-point lead. Boy, I'm really impressed with the Towson defense, Chris. Well, it's not well. getting any shots. I mean, they're just denying them shots, except for Jones again. That's a good job by Albans. He yeah, made a really terrific was. pass to the baseline. He's also still favoring that leg, which caused him to come out of the game a few minutes ago. He's in pain, but that was a terrific pass and one of the few times tonight that Loyola's looked to the baseline and made the correct pass. Well, a lot of times, you know, you, you look in there and they just arms and hands and people in the way and you, you can't get it in there. You know, Walker has been denied the ball and uh, seems tentative to shoot the ball unless he's in certain spots. And 
I don't remember uh, more than one or two shots from Brian Walker the entire game. He's one of their good shooters, uh, potentially. No, they haven't gotten much out of him, but they haven't gotten really much out of their offense, Vince. They just haven't had that many clean shots, and, yeah. and a lot of that has to, of course, be credited to the Towson defense. Absolutely. 53-35 Towson. There's another backdoor number. They missed, and Loyola will get the rebound, but in rebounding, Brian Almond, I think, uh, is pushing off. 2-2 two -two is pushing off. Brian Almond, junior from Fort Washington, Maryland. Well, Terry Chuax has a number of Baltimore kids on his team. We had talked about this earlier in the week. Amatucci said that he just, for what he felt he needed for his team this year and next year, he felt he had to go outside of Baltimore to get, and there was no knock on the talent in Baltimore. On the other hand, Chuax felt that the kind of players he needed to get were from Baltimore, so he went and got them. And next and year, he's going to have six kids oh, yeah. on the squad. He's got Kirk Lee and Kelly Williamson and Kennell Jones from the Baltimore players coming up. That basket won't count as Dorsey makes a nice move, but he was fouled before he went into the hoop. Actually, they have uh, Kirk Lee, who was at Calvert Hall, Dunbar Way to Western Kentucky, and Kelly Williamson, who was at Mount St. Joe and then Calvert Hall and Xavier, and a youngster from Poly, Kennell Jones, who was Old Dominion. Their transfers sitting out. They're coming in next year. They're really going to be... And they have too many people. That's right. And they'll have the benefit of having practiced all year with this team. Right. Another backdoor move to Dorsey. Nobody can test it. But he walked. He, mis he mishandled the pass. And then he tried a little number on the other side and uh, was uh, doing a little Fred Astaire. I think you're imitation. seeing the experience of the Towson guards, Vince, when they overplay the ball outside, as Loyola has done. The experience of the Towson guards is to look to that weak side, and they've been able to exploit that, whereas Loyola's guards haven't been able to do it. And that's a matter of experience. Well, the first thing you said coming on tonight, there's Bonham. Short. First thing you said coming in tonight, Chris, it is a game for the guards. Bounce pass, one too many pass. They're coming the other way. It's two on one. They try to hush up the guards. Wayne Martin, he tries a more conservative shot underneath and makes it. Is showtime. Well, I'll tell you what, Wayne Martin knows that he didn't want to go home or back to his room tonight and look in the VCR machine how he blew that jam. He didn't even want to go the other way. That's right. So he was determined that after missing that jam, he was going to get another shot. Soon. <laughs> That's right. I think we'll see it again. And this is a case of maybe over exuberance. Put that baby home. Whoops, I think That's I right. missed it. Uh -oh. Give me another Give me, shot yeah. at it. And he's he's going to be forever grateful to the guy who got it back to him, John Bays. That's right. To give him another chance. Now Loyola is strapping for rebounds. Walker gets it. And they will get it out of there, I believe. Boney underneath to, uh, to Allman, and he's fouled. Or has the ball knocked out of his hands. Well, there's an attempt at a transition basket, and that's something that Loyola has had very few of tonight, off the points off the break. Boney misses. 20-footer. Tommy Jones bounces it off his foot, goes out of bounds. That ought to be a two-on-one. They ought to get something out of this. By Jeff Natton as Dorsey followed him to the basket. 55-37 Towson. 9-50 left in the game. Having said that Loyola hasn't scored many points off the break, I'm surprised because according to the stat sheet, they out-rebounded Towson by three in the first half. Dorsey, 57-37. Yeah, they out-rebounded, but then they lost the ball before they had the chance to shoot the ball a lot of times. Those bad turnovers. Good turnaround jumper by John Boney. For Boney, that'll be his prime time play for the night. <laughs> Tassin playing for the good shot or looking for Dorsey underneath, maybe. He goes inside, and uh, people are all over Mark Boyle. I got to believe that uh, Loyola's got to be a more tired ball club too, Vince. They've had to work very hard for all of their points against the Towson defense. 
Amatucci hasn't been able to substitute as much as Truax has. He's been running guys in there every three or four minutes. And Amatucci has essentially been limited to, I think, about two substitutions. He's had Wojcik in there just a little bit tonight and Wagner for only two spells during the game. And uh, I think he's got a tired ball club right now where Towson looks much fresher because Truax has been able to use his bench. Guys who haven't played a lot, too, Elam and uh, Nathan are playing all the way, and Alman playing uh, all the time. And plus the fact Morrison is on the bench. Right. And he didn't have a good evening to begin with. And I think part of that simply was because he was sharing responsibility of bringing the ball up and also being asked to score points. He was only two for ten in the first half. Mark Boyle's on the line. Boney fouled out with seven points. And Muld Muldrow is in for Towson. He hits it, Mark Boyle. 58-39, Towson with nine minutes left. Has a commanding lead. Boyle has five points. Mark Boyle. Well, Towson State was 8-0 in Saturday games last year, and it looks like they're going to pick up where they left off. Walker missed an easy layup. Really, that's, that's freshman nerves, I guess, even though it's late in the game. And Towson loses it at the other end. Well, Johnson tried to make something happen there, and there was nothing to happen. He threw the ball out of bounds. Towson has Mount St. Mary's here next Saturday afternoon. We might recommend that, but they play at Navy on Monday. Over the back that time, Alvin. Alvin. Yeah, Alvin. Good positioning by Dwayne Martin, and Alvin tried to go over the back and got called for the foul. How many on Alvin? That's, his, that's five that's, on Alvin. Yeah, he's out of here. Boy, this team's in real tough shape now. Alvin is left. Boney's left. Morrison's left. 59-39, Towson leads. And Loyal is down to the freshman freshman. Boy, we're going to get the young man from down in uh, Anne Arundel County, Steve Foley from Annapolis. Sophomore 6'8", coming in to replace Brian Alman. He played three years at Annapolis High School. Yeah. Dwayne Martin from Hyattsville, a junior, makes the hoop, gets another one. 60 to 39. 61 39. Towson continues to put a little pressure on up there. Elam tries to get it. And now Walker hits it. Brian Walker for Loyola 62 30 41. Fink against Nattens, who's done a pretty good job on Fink. Muldrow tied up, gets it to Johnson, who's lying on the his back. <laughs> Interesting and, uh, pass. <laughs> he figures he started everything else. Uh, he can do it from this position. I'd say, I don't know, but Ed Muldrow looks like, I bet you he was the catcher on his little league team. Yeah. <laughs> huh? The tight end on the football team. And I'm not sure he's played the position in high school where he's playing here, the power forward. More of a center in high school. Here comes Holloman Phillips, now Loyola behind by 20 with seven minutes and 45 seconds left. Natten shoots and hits it. Six points for Jeff Natten. I'll tell you, that soccer got him in shape for it. Well, I'm sure he's in shape, but it, uh, he's not in <laughs> not basketball, basketball shape. Basketball right. shape and and he's played an awful lot of minutes here tonight, Vince. I don't think you or I expected him to be playing this much. I doubt that Amatucci did either, but uh, third on. That's third asking on an awful, now. asking an awful lot of a kid to come out of one sport and in the span of literally a week, yeah, right. with only a couple of practices, come in and and be productive. So I really think he's done a good job under the most trying circumstances. Playing a real tough shooter too, and uh, and think he's done a good job against him. Think misses and. Uh, 
Phillips will try to get it at the other end. Walker tries to keep it alive. Caldwell must have lost it. Thompson has a player shaken up underneath Avery and Basie. But he appears to be... Well, somebody poked him in the eye, or... I think that's the problem. We're going to take a timeout. Well, I'll tell you, the play by Holloman Phillips was strictly out of the wild, wild west on that one. Yeah. Uh, he really didn't have a good idea what he well, wanted to do with that ball, but once he committed to going across the lane and getting in the air with it, he figured, I've come this far. I, I might as well go well, the rest of the way. All night long, I haven't shot. Nobody else is shooting too well. <laughs> Here's mine. Basie with 12 points is uh, going to stay. Now he's going to leave. Adrian Basie. Royal trying to inbound it to Brian Walker. Those bounce passes in that heavy traffic frequently come up in the other hand. Think to Marty Johnson. This could be backcourt. They call it backcourt. Marty came over the line. The ball is behind the line, and uh, he reached back, and it hit on the other side, and Loyola will get it. I think maybe the uh, nicest thing Terry Chuax could do here is very soon go to a empty go to bench. a zone defense. Yeah, or empty the bench. Bully is fouled and we'll get a shot. Barring a thorough collapse by Towson State here, like if they go 0 for the next seven minutes, I don't think this leads in a whole lot of jeopardy. No. Royal well, has a few of its guns in there and the. The guns have fouled out. Nobody to fight the war. There's Walker. Once you put it down, you can't do anything else but shoot it or pass it. And they come in your face. You can't dribble it again. Gee, they've lost the ball a lot in there on those, those kind of plays. Marty Johnson is going to make a layup. Maybe a little more than that. 63-43. Nice move by Nat. He's going by Cooper. To Walker, that's his shot, and he oh, Eddie Muldrow rebound. Towson comes with Dwayne Walker, Martin. Back to Marty Johnson. Marty's gone all the way. Foley steals it. Muldrow back to Muldrow, and it's a hoop for the, the Tigers. 65-43. Good quick hands by Johnson to keep yeah. the ball alive. That's another sloppy another. pass. And Marty, uh, Elam dove after him, and the ball's off of Marty Johnson out of bounds, and it'll be Loyola ball. You know, my first impression of Loyola and looking at him against Maryland the other night, even though they got the quick lead, 15 to 5, nobody was shooting the ball. And uh, it's evident tonight, besides, uh, you know, they get it down to four sometimes and uh, blow easy shots. The shooting percentage has been awful. Lack of a point guard. And uh, they really have some problems until they get into a flow. And it maybe will develop. Well, it all begins with the guy with the ball who brings it into your offensive end. And right. it's been a problem for Loyola. But not to lay it on the uh, shoulders of, of the uh, point guard. Which, whose spot was not filled very capably tonight by either Michael Morrison, who was really playing out of position, or Holloman Phillips. But the rest of the players in this Loyola team are, are so young, Vince. I mean, they're all freshmen. Yeah. They really, I mean, even though they've been practicing six weeks together, this is for all intents and purposes the only, uh, only the fifth game they've ever played together in. Now when you take away your point guard from the offense, the rest of them are all trying to do things that they're really not capable or have, haven't practiced enough to do. And that's why I think you've seen so many sloppy passes. Well, I think the reason of Morris, and it was a big burden, but he had to be the point guard to give him some kind of leadership. The captain of the ship, just somebody directing things out there. Yeah. And, and uh, he, he got into a bad shooting first half and then in a foul trouble and really was never a factor in the game. Nan's a good pass to Phillips, but there's a six foot eight inch guy there in the little guy's face. He's 5'8. Yeah, Marty Johnson pass to Cooper, who will lay it in. 
Everett Cooper from Southern High. Yeah, but you see, the problem is you don't want to hit a 5'8 guy in the baseline. He was double right, teamed exactly. and coughed it up. They bounced passing it to death in the, along the baseline and in tight. It's the but Towson's great defense, I think, is, uh, again, partially responsible for that. I give Towson an awful lot of credit for playing very good defense against a young Loyola team. And you put the two together. Well, Walsh is got a big, off the bench now. Advantage. And, and this is the second time we've seen Dave Wojcik. He came on pretty late in the first half. Now he's back out to get some more experience. Wojcik from West Virginia, the brother of Doug, who played at Navy. Inside to Muldrow. Now to Nattens, and they're going to call a blocking foul, I would think, on Cooper, who impedes Nathan's progress the other way. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good call. A little Hollywood there by Cooper. <laughs> And the correct call. It is amazing how much Wojcik not only physically resembles his brother, but, but plays his style. Plays oh, he's a left-handed. Yeah. And as uh, Mike Shashevsky called him, what do you mean Wojcik? It's Wojcik. Wojcik. You remember down at the uh, at the NCAA Final Four or the uh, Eastern Region? Nathan's makes the first one. I'll tell you, he's done a pretty good job. I'm he impressed. sure has. I, I tell you, he's he and Allman, who's out of the game now. Uh, there's the mark of a, a tired player. When you hit the front of the rim, your legs go first, and that's what that's when the shooting is affected. Well, if he hadn't been playing Loyola or soccer for Loyola, he'd be totally gassed. <laughs> right. And again, Wagner tries to put it up easily and misses, and Loyola will maintain control. I don't think they tried to utilize Wagner early in the game at all. He only had the two jump hooks from the baseline, and otherwise he wasn't a part of the Loyola offense. The point guards can't get the ball to him or couldn't at that stage. Now there's a force pass in there. But Loyola hustles, uh, but loses it. As Marty Johnson comes up, and there's trouble at mid-court there as Wojcik gets it to Nattens, who shoots. And 67-46, Towson. 4.30 left in the game. Nine eight, points. Eight points, yeah. He has nine. Johnson. Boom. He's given a few away uh, to other people to score. He deserves a pop himself. Good move by Wojcik past him, but nothing materializes yet. Elam hit. Marcus Elam from Virginia Beach, a freshman. Marty Johnson going coast to coast and then losing the ball. Loyal possession on the alternate possession. Well, Loyola's going to get one day's rest tomorrow, and then they're back in it Monday night at home against St. Mary's College. And five, days, five days later, their conference opener against St. Francis, and then they hit the road for a tournament at Hawaii. Oh, boy. You going to go there? If I'm going to lose, better cover. <laughs> if I'm going to lose, that's where I want to go to lose. Hawaii. <laughs> that's right. Towson will play Navy on Monday and Wilmington Wednesday and then Mount St. Mary's here next Saturday afternoon. That may be a good one. 3.33 left in this contest. 69 to 48. The Towson Tigers are winning at home for the ninth straight time on a set. Elam tries to put it up and Cooper ties him up. See, when you come back from Hawaii, nobody asks you how they play, how you play. They say, how is the weather? <laughs> What's it like out there? That's right. And, of course, that's that's a great experience. I would think that's a marvelous recruiting tool. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, we're scheduled to play a small but uh, significant tournament I, in Hawaii. I, I remember when Virginia went to Hawaii and got dumped by Chaminade. Chaminade. Remember that? Nobody heard of old Chaminade for then. With a high arcing free throw effort. And Loyola will substitute uh, Mike Porcelli in the game from Arnold, Maryland. This game really was decided early. Loyola went the uh, 
first eight or nine minutes of the game had only scored three points. And yet, came back to within six at the half, and uh, Towson put him away quickly though, in the early part of the second half. Well, they've been playing uphill, though, the entire game. And right. then when you lose Morrison early in the second half, as they did, and then I think we're going to get a timeout now with 3.30 to go. 11 points for Elam, and we got a timeout. Towson ahead 69-50. We'll be back in a minute. Circuit City has so many wonderful electronic things all under one roof, it's hard not to get distracted. I'm here to buy a calculator, and that's all. Oh. No browsing, no touching. Circuit City can really test your self-control. Very nice. But it's not a calculator. It's not a calculator. The most up-to-date selection of brand names, all at Circuit City's guaranteed low prices. So how could I resist? Circuit City. Merry Christmas! Ho, ho, ho! Put this days before Christmas in a Lutherville way. The Watson boys were ready with their Christmas display. There'll be trim trees, wreaths, and ornaments by the score. Exciting Christmas specials many never seen before. Christmas Creation Corner, where you can see talented people at work with originality. Your eyes will be dazzled by all they behold. Twinkling lights, shiny balls, just waiting to be sold. The one thing to remember all season through is that the Watson boys are waiting for you. Sixty-nine to fifty, the Tigers are winning it. Going away from the Loyola Greyhounds. Ed Muldrow will bring the ball in bounds from the end line. And Towson now with Lewis Waller in the game from Wilmington. Brings it up past Porricelli. Now down to Cooper. And outside to uh, Tommy Jones. Finally, get, old Marty Johnson got a, got a rest. Mike Porricelli called.